Behind me is the famous outline of Teapot Mesa, so we can only really be in one place in the world, the Osako Ray Mine in Arizona. Located about 65 miles southeast of Phoenix, this is one of the largest open pit copper mines in the US. Osako Ray runs a 24-7 operation, moving around 250,000 tons of material every day. Moving that huge amount of material requires a very efficient truck management system. This includes scheduled engine replacements in the Liebherr T282 trucks, some of the largest in the world. The mine took this repairing opportunity to initiate a different approach. They are replacing original Tier 1 20V MTU 4000 engines with new Tier 2 Cummins QSK60s. So we are here to see how the QSK60 repower integration was undertaken and how the replacement engines have been performing under extremely high ambient temperatures. The biggest push for this project started with the operational cost of ownership. We were looking at the engines, what we were doing for uh, reliability maintenance and how we were approaching that with the other vendors. And we found that the Cummins engine was a lower cost per hour operating unit. The repower itself took shape when Brad Scow approached us. Um, he gave us an opportunity to look at uh, better fuel burn rates, to look at operating costs, and then also look at environmental concerns. As we started going through the process, Cummins came in and they developed the harness, the engine module, the engineering aspect to install it into the truck, um, and they gave us a turnkey application. The repower package has been designed as a turnkey module here at the local branch of Cummins Rocky Mountain in Avondale, Arizona. Central to the success of this repower project was undoubtedly the team here at Avondale, led by Brad Scow, who has overseen this project from the start. We had discussed that the truck availability, fuel consumption, and performance needs to be at least the same, if not better. Operating costs, which includes scheduled maintenance, unplanned events, and rebuild costs were a concern. And of course, availability of the engine and, and total truck availability. How many of the original components have been used? Basically, we are utilizing all of the original components. The frame, the radiator, the radiator supports, the main traction alternator the uh, frame brackets, uh, the mountings for the frame in the truck remains identical. Uh, so we utilize a very large portion of it. Primarily all, all we're converting is the front cross member for the engine support, the intake and the exhaust system, the cooling system, plumbing, and the electrical interface. The customer expectation is a maximum of three days to perform this repower on site. And our target is to do that in two and a half days. And that is complete with the load testing, the site testing, and the customer acceptance. Um, having a three day turnaround on an engine or any replacement is remarkable. But that all goes to show what Brad Scout and his team has done. They've actually set up the development, engineered, processed it, and have everything in place. They've given us a product that we can actually put in the truck and turn around faster than any other standard engine changeout that we've done. Typical engine changeouts take anywhere from four to five days in the shop, depending upon what you're doing. On the engine for this truck, um, they have provided us a lot of information, support, engineering, and development, and not only just the implementation process, but also the follow-up and looking forward in the future what we can do. So Keith, so how do you see your machine availability? Um, having better reliability over availability is the key here, and this Cummins engine will provide reliability that we're looking for. Do you see any real financial benefit as a result of that? The financial benefits speak for themselves as you run through the years. What you're going to see first off is you're going to see an environmental impact when you have a lower NOx and lower emissions, followed by an operator safety aspect of lower decibels. I've been driving the um, haul trucks for four years the whole time I've been employed here. And I've been on the Liber T282s for three years now. So did you notice also anything about the quietness of the engine? Um, you know, start up or vibration? Do you notice any changes there? Oh, definitely. The engine is so much quieter. You can, it's hard to hear it running when you turn on the truck. You have to, you have to really pay attention. And if another truck is next to you with the original engine, you just, you almost can't hear it. 
And yeah. what about the radio? You can even hear the radio now? Definitely. Hearing, <laughs> hearing radio traffic is yes. so much easier without the loud, with a quieter engine. So when you get refueled, do you notice that you're putting less fuel in the truck than you were when you had the original engine in there? Oh, definitely. The, the program that they had to call our trucks in for fuel, I would usually, before, with the previous engine, I would go in and they would fill it with about 700 gallons usually. And then they put this engine in and they continued to use that program and that rate and now the truck would get 500 gallons when it's so about 200 gallons less when it would need yes. to be refueled. So that makes a difference to the amount of runs you can do on the, on the oh, tank yeah. of fuel? Oh yes, I, I think that's about, it depends on the length of the run and the grade and the load and everything, but all in all it's about three runs probably of the longer runs. Three additional runs yes. before you need to, to mm -hmm. fill up again. That's that's very good indeed. We got an engine that is a viable replacement for the 20V that's currently in there. This engine itself is pulling 2800. Time on grade is equal to the current engine that's in there. The fuel burn rate has a 8.6% advantage right now. Um, and we are seeing lower emissions. We are seeing uh, lower decibels. Um, operator concerns are huge for us. So the safe aspect of having a quieter engine is, is very pertaining to what we want to accomplish. The support that we gained from Brad Scow and his group down in Phoenix is just remarkable. I mean, it's not about the product or who owns it, it's about who supports the product the best. Do you see any real financial benefit as a result of that? The actual reduction in cost is going to show itself when you get to the cost of ownership. We're expecting to see anywhere from 60 to 65 percent savings in cost of ownership on the engine itself.